Hi, welcome to ECTV. I'm Katarina Kim. And I'm Kaylin Flores. In today's episode, we'll be focusing on teenage drug use in Ventura County. We will be discussing the devastating effects drugs have on the brain in day-to-day -day life while also providing information on drug treatment and prevention with Ventura County Behavioral Health. Jean Napora, a counselor at a local high school in Ventura County, is with us to share her experience as a counselor in dealing with students in crisis and in this case, crisis related to drugs. To talk about drug use and counseling in a high school setting, we have Samaya Islam in the studio with Jane Napora. Hello, I'm Samaya here with Ms. Jane Napora. She's a counselor at El Camino High School. We are with Ms. Napora to discuss drug related issues in a high school setting. Hi, Mrs. Napora. Hi, Samaya. So how long have you been a counselor? And more specifically, how long have you been a high school counselor? I've been a counselor for approximately 10 years. Um, been involved in education for 17 years and worked with high school students for about uh, 10 of those 17 years. And why did you want to become a counselor? I wanted to be a counselor uh, because I felt that it was something that was necessary on a campus. I feel that beyond the classroom, students need to have the opportunity to um, come to somebody that's not going to uh, judge them and just will be there uh, to listen uh, to some of the, the challenges that they're experiencing um, and that I would be able to um, provide them with uh, direction. So what is your role as a counselor to aid students with drug-related problems? My role is to work with the student to find out what is the problem, um, how they um, came to the, the, the situation that they're currently in, mm -hmm. work with the um, school resource officer, the assistant principal, um, and the parents to be able to provide that family with some resources to help that student get back on the right track. And how often do you come across students with drug-related problems? Uh, I would say probably um, maybe on a monthly basis. Okay. And like more than one student or? Correct. Yeah. Okay. And how do drugs affect high school students? How do they affect them? Um, most importantly, it keeps them from reaching their full potential. Right. Um, it um, hinders their motivation. Mm -hmm. Um, and their ability to do well in their classes, um, form healthy relationships, um, and also do well in extracurricular activities too. Okay, it's pretty sad. Um, are drugs a problem for our local students? Well, anytime you have one student that is affected by drugs, I, I consider that a problem. Mm -hmm. So I would say yes. Um, Ventura County um, does experience issues with illegal drug use. Okay. And how do these students find their way to you? Uh, well, it could be a, a student that just wants to seek um, some assistance in trying to find out what they can do um, to help get back on the right track. So they could find me in my office or on campus. Um, when they speak to me, it's, it's confidential. So they know that they're coming to somebody that they can share something with. Mm -hmm. um, uh, other times, parents may learn of substance abuse through um, that their child is, is doing through social media or um, by finding things in their, in their house, mm -hmm. um, drug par paraphernalia. Right. Um, and so um, sometimes parents come in and, and seek our assistance. Um, and other times we'll have um, school faculty, um, principals um, come to us to try to aid the family. Okay. And what do you find to be the most common motive behind teenage drug use? Um, 
Well, there's a, a lot of different motives. I would say um, lack of, of self-confidence is a big one. Uh, when students aren't feeling good about themselves, they're trying Absolutely. to find ways to help themselves feel better. Uh, it could be um, genetics or, um, you know, which eventually manifests mm -hmm. itself in, um, from, in mental illness. So a family can be suffering from mental illness or a child can be suffering from mental illness. Um, those are probably the, the two most common reasons why students use drug use drugs. Okay, and how often do you find that drug-related incidents are related to peer pressure? Um, it happens. Okay. Um, you know, I, I don't think that um, students at this age that, that are, if they're lacking in confidence, I think that they um, struggle with forming their own identity okay. and so sometimes that results in um, in trying to bend to other people mm -hmm. trying to form their identity uh, and and then that results in in peer pressure and in in drug use is there anything we can do as a community to aid students in this area well, I think awareness is a, a big one. Okay. So just uh, awareness of what causes drug abuse or um, anything that um, parents and families can do to um, support their child so that they know that they have a supportive environment at home um, and then also at school could um, possibly keep a child from deciding to um, go down the wrong path. Um, okay. So provide a supporting and loving environment and then um, and continue to provide resources. We have many agencies out there that are willing to help students and families mm -hmm. um, when they when they experience challenges like these like this. And how do you think we can create this awareness? How do you think we can make that available to students? Uh, well, through schools, okay. um, having more counselors available, <laughs> I think, is um, a, a big step in the right direction. Yeah. Uh, awareness to teachers, mm -hmm. um, uh, family support projects, so parents know what to look for um, and what steps to take to be able to um, get help. Yeah. if they find that their child or student is struggling. Okay, and besides the effects of drugs during high school, what are the effects of drugs afterwards? Outside of high school? Yeah, once high school is completed. Um, well, we see it where um, we would have students have difficulty forming goals and reaching their mm -hmm. goals. So whether it, that be any type of post-secondary training, um, they they once aspired to be maybe a mechanic, but then mm -hmm. they lose uh, their sight of their goals. I would say that that's the biggest thing is is just students losing their motivation, okay. um, not having the ability to um, support themselves and become um, independent individuals and in, in our community. Okay. Well, thank you so much for taking your time to be here with us today, Ms. Napora. You're welcome, Samaya. It's good to know there are counselors like Jane Napora looking out for fellow high school students in Ventura County. I agree. It's important for school administrators to be aware of these issues so that students can get the help they need. Especially nowadays when there are so many new drugs on the market, such as Spice, a synthetic strain of marijuana. Spice has increased in its popularity over recent years and is calling for concern. So what about treatment? How do we as a society combat the effects of drugs such as spice? That is a great question, Katerina. We have Gabriella De La Leo in the studio with Richard LaPerrier, a drug treatment specialist who works at the Ventura County Behavioral Health. This facility provides free confidential drug treatment to underage teens and as adults as well. Now back to the studio with Gabriella. Hello, we are here today with Richard LaPierre to discuss the topic, 
of drug treatment and the use of spice. It's nice to meet you. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Gabriela. I'm glad to be here. So, Richard, you I hear you are the clinic administrator for... Well, I work in one of the clinics of Ventra County Alcohol and Drug Treatment, and I'm located in Simi Valley, but we also have a clinics in Ventura, in Fillmore, in Oxnard. We actually have two clinics in Oxnard. One of them is called A New Start for Mom, is dedicated to working with uh, women who have children. All right, well, now let's talk about the lab work and the drug testing uses of, you know, spice and all of that stuff. So how do you go about that okay. with drug testing? So all of the clients that come into our clinics uh, receive what we call an assessment, mm -hmm. which comprises a drug test and a very comprehensive psychosocial questionnaire that, that we try to understand the person for where they're coming from. We're asking them questions about what drugs they've used, including alcohol, of course, and how they've used them. And oftentimes it's, depending on the drug they've been using, we ask them how they obtained it and how much they, they, they've used, especially when it comes to spice, because spice being a, a, a quite different drug than what people are expecting to when they're purchasing it. Uh, because of its, uh, its approach to how it's made. It's a chemical that's sprayed on a plant-based material, and the composition of that chemical uh, tends to change quite a lot. And we never yeah. know how much that, of that chemical there is on the plant. How exactly do they distribute this or constantly change this, and how do they keep up with that? Complex is question. It to keep it's up a, with it's that? a complex question because we are seemingly always a little bit behind the, the people who are creating those substances, mm -hmm. tend to look at it from the standpoint of how can I sell this if it's illegal, but if I can skirt legality by changing the formula, then for a period of time, this thing will be available on the market and it can be sold in, in, in a lot of places like liquor stores and smoke shops and, and places where they sell drug paraphernalia. But to go back to testing, what we do with our clients is we drug test. The test goes to a lab and it's, the, it's analyzed and it tells us exactly what kind of chemical was in the lab uh, test we sent. When it comes to spice, because of the changing nature of that, chemical, we oftentimes do not see it. So we're really? always playing wow. catch up. Wow. We're trying to get to the place where we can read it, but oftentimes when it changes, we, we stop having the ability to read it. So we don't know from the standpoint of a lab test whether or not this was in the person. That's why the rapport we establish with the client, be it that it's an adolescent or an adult, that rapport helps us in deepening the conversation about what drugs they've used, how they've used them, when they use them. And oftentimes in the, that conversation, the subject of spice or bath salts will come up and they will let us know that they've been using them because uh, in the case of an adolescent, uh, if they're tested at school or in the sports team, they won't be detected so they can exactly, use yeah, those drugs. Yeah, yeah so how, um, what tests do they use in order to do that if it's untraceable? I know that they do like multiple drug test uses on you know the basics alcohol and all of that stuff but in order to really find that out what would you do well <laughs> uh, again if we if we can't detect it through a lab test or a screening all we have left is the, the relationship we've established with the person and if someone wants to lie and there is no real evidence mm -hmm. then we or we are subjected to that but exactly we've so. had some really good tests in the past. We've used them, uh, and it's a screen. Uh, they had a, we have urine urinalysis. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a screening tool that uses saliva. And right now, there, the, there's a couple of companies that are developing a product that will screen for multiple variants of the synthetic cannabis, which is called spice also. Wow, I see it because I didn't even know that, and that's wow. <laughs> so well, understanding the science behind it, how, like, how do they kind of go about that as a means of like detoxing the body? 
Well, de detoxing is, can be a very complex a series of events. First, if the person is fully intoxicated with the substance, oftentimes if they're manifesting psychotic features, they will end up in the hospital. Uh, they'll end up uh, either in the psychiatric hospital or the regular hospital ICU, where they will be given some sedative in order to stave off the worst of the uh, behaviors that come with, with psychotic features or paranoia, which is usually uh, violence towards self or others and trying to run away. So once they're sedated, the, the drug in and of itself will work itself out of the body and each drug has a, uh, what is called a half-life. Mm -hmm. How long does it take for half the drug to leave your body? And with spice and with bad salts, we don't quite know because we don't quite know what's in it. And we don't quite know how much the person has ingested. So if somebody comes to a detox facility and says, I've been uh, injecting heroin one gram five <laughs> right, times a day, right. we sort of have an idea of what, what's going on. But if they say, well, I've been you know, using bad salts, we don't know exactly what's in there. So uh, it's, it's difficult. It's a very difficult process. And oftentimes uh, there are consequences, uh, called them biochemical consequences, to the damage to the brain that is not reversible. Yeah. And we have no indication as to which person will suffer those irreversible damages because do you know all of our brains are unique. The percentile of that, like the majority, do kids fall under that category, or is uh, it mostly well? There, there matter? is, there is numbers. There are, I'm sorry, there are numbers uh, available, but the numbers are really mitigated by the fact that a lot of people do not make it to an emergency room, do not make it to a place where mm -hmm. these things will be counted. So if we tell you that X amount of kids are using this drug, it's only the numbers we've, we've tabulated. Anecdotally, we know that from all of the clinics and all the conversations our clinicians are having with each other and the data we're gathering here at Ventura County Alcohol and Drug Programs is we know that there's a substantial number of kids that have tried those drugs and they go in favor and out of favor. So yeah. there will be times where we have quite a surge of use of spice and or bath salts and times where it sort of disappears and goes away and because somebody, somebody, because <laughs> something else is, it. yeah, exactly. somebody, uh, somebody else has brought something else and then mm -hmm. all people are trying it. Wow. Crazy, crazy stuff going yes, on in the is. world. <laughs> so, well, you said earlier that it takes about 72 hours, about 72 hours, for the body to fully flush it out or detox Well, uh, different drugs require a different amount depend? of times. Most of the stimulants, and if you're thinking bat salts, it's a synthetic stimulant, yeah. will take approximately 72 hours to leave the body. If you're thinking opioids or cannabis, it can take longer. If you're taking alcohol, take longer. Again, we need to know which substance mm -hmm. you are detoxing from, but after a week to 10 days, all substances should have left your body. That doesn't mean the damage to the brain is not there. Mm. If you've done some damage to your brain, it could take, well, it could take effects. a longer time. I mean, we've yeah. seen that in, in, in the addicts of methamphetamine where it could take up to mm -hmm. five years for the brains to get definitely, back to definitely. a form of normalcy. Yeah. This is a very beautiful, strong organ, the brain, but it also, when we subject it to those powerful chemicals, it can damage it profoundly. Yeah, and what are, what are some of those side effects uh, pertaining to the brain and stuff? Like, is that hemorrhaging or is it more of psychosis? <laughs> well, a lot of the images that we've gotten from uh, the research on uh, the effect of those drugs show that there is a biological damage, a traceable amount of neurons that have been damaged really? permanently. Yeah. So they sort of like, yeah. the best example would be like melting them. Even though, even though it's synthetic, even yeah. though it's a... It, because the, the <laughs> you don't know what you're putting in your body when you're well, using yeah. that. So some of those chemicals tend to damage the neuron to where they have shriveled up a little bit and they mm -hmm. don't no longer transmit electricity or chemicals. Mm -hmm. So, and it, the, the damage becomes substantial after months or years of use. So you're saying it will prominently affect the nervous system more yeah. so than, wow. Yeah. Yeah. And with that, of course, it affects behaviors because 
your behaviors are directed by your central nervous system yeah. and that wonderful instrument called the brain. Wow, that's some tough stuff. Well, we <laughs> see this in our clinics and that's what we do as clinicians. We work with the folks who have used those drugs and are found themselves having some difficulties in their lives. Wow. Well, thank you all for watching and thank you, Richard, for joining us today. Thank you very much. <laughs> for more information, you can contact Richard at his email, richardlapierre at ventura.org. People seeking treatment can also call 805-981-9200. Thank you, Richard, and it was lovely to meet you. Likewise, Gabriela. Ventura County Behavioral Health is a great option for teens that need or even want to detox or get treatment. It absolutely is. But how do we prevent drug use before we have to treat it? David Tovar is joining our very own Zion Reza to talk about just that. Hello, we are here today with David Tovar to discuss the topic of drug prevention and the use of spice. Thank you for being here today, David. Thank you for having me. So my first question for you is what is spice? Spice is a synthetic herbal mixture similar to marijuana that's you know, said to be safer, but in reality it's an incredibly dangerous drug uh, that no one should use. Mm -hmm. So what measures has Ventura County taken to prevent the use of spice? So what Ventura County Behavioral Health does is we go out into communities, to schools, to centers, and we give information about how these drugs affect the brain. Okay. So what effects has drug use had on our population as far as illness, deaths, mm -hmm. etc.? Well, in the past year we've had four admin admittances to Ventura County Medical Center. Mm -hmm. uh, three of those ended up in the intensive care unit. Uh, due to, you know, a wide variety of, of, of illnesses, you know, like hallucinations, paranoia, and anxiety. Mm -hmm. So why is it so hard to identify? Well, you know, since these are synthetic drugs, mm -hmm. they're constantly being tweaked and changed uh, to evade the law. Mm -hmm. So how do you prevent a drug that you can't always identify? Yeah, by trying to change the social norms around the usage of these drugs. Mm -hmm. So we want to get out there, let people know that these drugs can affect your brain, can affect your well-being, can affect your development. Okay. So where and how are these drugs created? So many of these drugs are created you know, in research labs at universities. Mm -hmm but they're meant for very specific medical uses. But the reality is, is that many of these drugs are then being produced in China and India, uh, being sprayed onto herb mixtures and then people smoke them mm -hmm. and causing different forms of psychosis and, and paranoia. Okay. So I see you've brought some samples to show us. Can yes, yes I have. Example. So this is K2 Blonde mm -hmm. and this is Head Trip. What you'll see is both of them say, not for human consumption. Okay. And they'll also say lab certified okay. to contain the following. And the following is the synthetic THC or marijuana. Uh, and you'll see that each one of them has different, different labels, JWH, HU. Mm -hmm. And that denotes either where they're created or, or, or how they, or who made them. So JWH is a PhD researcher what he said about these drugs and the usage of them is that it's like playing Russian roulette, okay. that you don't know the outcome of it, that you know, it could seriously affect you, okay. and that you know, they're never safe to be used on, used on humans because they're meant for very specific research settings. Okay. So from your statistics, um, one in nine 12th graders used spice in the last year in America. Uh -huh. So how do you prevent drug use in schools all over Ventura County? So we, again, really getting out there, really talking to teenagers and telling them about how these drugs affect their brain, how they can impair them, and you know, the realities of, of, of what can happen to them uh, potentially you know, in their life or with the law. Okay. So there are some different labels on these different drugs. Could you elaborate maybe a little bit on that? Uh-huh. So many of these, you know, they have the different drugs that are in them, but also they say that they're used as aromatics or potpourris. Mm -hmm. uh, some say incense uh, and not uh, meant to smoke or inhale. Okay. Uh, and that's how kids are getting high with them. Right. So when did they become illegal? Well, 
different forms have been uh, been illegal for different periods of time. Mm -hmm. Uh, so every single time the legislature or governing body has, has banned them, they've slightly tweaked uh, the structure of, of, of the drug to make it legal again. So it's, many legislatures are being proactive and they're banning uh, many different types of substances. Okay. So recently there was a trend in using bath salts to get high. Uh -huh. So what relation do these inhalants have with bath salts? So bath salts are another form of synthetic drugs mm -hmm. um, and incredibly dangerous as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what are some side effects of these drugs? So many people take these drugs to relax, or they think to relax them or to, to increase their mood. Mm -hmm. Uh, but the reality of it is, uh, the reality of it is that they have extreme anxiety, paranoia, psychosis, hallucinations, also vomiting, and, and possibly in some cases violence. Okay. So, what are some effects that drug use, such as you know, using spice and alcohol, what effects do they have on driving? Well, we know that minimum uh, use of THC or synthetic uh, marijuana at least doubles your chance at crashing. Mm -hmm. and that in combination with alcohol, that those chances skyrocket. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what would you say, since these drugs have become illegal, has the use gone down or have they been, you know, used to get around the law or how do you perceive that statistic? So. Hopefully, we're seeing with, with our educational campaigns, with our informational campaigns, uh, usage will go down here in Ventura mm -hmm. County and also around the state. Okay. Uh, but we'll need to wait and see. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well, that's all the time we have for today. But thank you, David, for being here. Thank you for having me. For more information, please contact him through his email at david.tovar at venturaorg.org or call him at 805-981-9115. For more information on SPICE, you can check out the county website at venturalimits.org. It has been very interesting to learn about SPICE, what it really is, the effects of it, and also various treatment options. That is what Easy TV is all about, bringing important and relevant stories to our community. Also, Ventura County Behavioral Health is confidential. You don't need parents' permission to get help. Call 805-577-1724 for more information, comments, questions, or assistance. Please go to their website at bchca.org. See you next time!